Hi guys, Quinn here again, uh, application of Geomicrographics. Some of you may already be familiar with me, or um, normally I give a lot more of the plant side of the information, but as plant is AutoCAD based, I also get a lot of AutoCAD queries, etc. So that being said, what I just wanted to show you was a cool little tool here in AutoCAD that not a lot of people are too aware of for some reason. And this little tool being the built-in calculator. Now, most people I've noticed seems to be using the gener general Microsoft calculator. Not that there's anything really wrong with this. I mean, it's pretty much standard what you can do. It gives you a lot of the same options, etc. Main difference being is that the Autodesk one is just, it's built directly into AutoCAD. It's quicker to easy to open up and find if you know where what you're looking for. Because right on your home tab, in your utilities panel, you've got calculator or quick calc actually as it's known. Just hover over it for a second. There we go, quick calculator. When I click on it, it brings up my quick calculator that I've got here, which gives you a whole whack of different options here, such as you can clear the current um, information inside your bar there. You can clear your history out. You can copy to your command bar, etc. Then it also gives you, of course, your normal calculation that you can do on your number pad. You've got an option for scientific calculation. You've even got the ability to convert units, which I found very useful as I'm constantly having to jump between um, imperial and metric. Also you have the option to do um, your variables, but I'm not going to be getting into that right now. Just giving you a basic overview as to what's possible, what you can do this for. Because it, it's quite nice to have this sitting here having it active, that it doesn't disappear when you click on any, anything. Because remember, like if you're going to be copying like something like this, like a field, if you had your calculator open, it would have to be on another screen, or otherwise it would jump behind the screen that is currently active. This palette will stay on top the whole time. So it's a bit more user-friendly. I can then copy this. Right, click off it, sorry. And paste it into my active area, which kind of way I'm working. And then I can do something like maybe, I don't know, multiply it. And then work with that. When I've got that information, if I was in another command, I could then also push it directly to my command bar. You know, it's gone directly in there without even having to do anything else. I don't have to go copy paste, etc. So if you were in another command and you were trying to use that information, that little button there just saves you a step or two. There's a bit more you can do with it, but I just wanted to just highlight that this tool is, yeah, free to use for whoever is actually currently using AutoCAD. You don't have to do anything funny with it. And it's quite a cool little nifty tool. That being said, there was one other little quick tip that I just wanted to show you guys, which I'm quite surprised that a lot, not a lot of, not a lot more people aren't using for some reason, or are using, is the quick select. So utilities panel, quick select and what this does this is a pretty interesting little tool this because what this is doing basically is it allows you to um, as its name suggests um, quickly select various items based on information you're giving it or criteria you're giving it so at the moment for instance it's set to either entire drawing multiple objects if you wanted to let's say you had like a um, two plate or something that had 10,000 holes in it you could set it to only find circular objects. And then you can see all the information about the circle pops up. So the circle, these basically these subs, uh, subsections will allow you to more accurately define what you're wanting to select. If you leave it on multiple, you'll notice it only gives you basic information such as color, layer, line type, etc. So when you find the right one that you're looking for or what you're trying to aim for, you can then specify the operator. So how is it going to find it? Like equals, is it going to be the exact same color? Is it not going to be equal? So as a color is a bit of a bad example as you're not really going to have a not equal color. So basically all it's going to be is anything but that really. Because the, the greater than and less than is not, because there's no greater than or less than in color. But if it was a numerical uh, value, then those would work. Or you could say select all. I don't know there may be a good reason for select all but I have not really encountered it too much myself please feel free to leave a comment for that one thank you 
Otherwise, in this case, I generally use equal. And like, let's say the value you can set is red. So what it should be doing is set, so anything in here that satisfies that the color is red, it should select. What it's going to do is it's going to include it in my new selection set. Is it going, or is it going to exclude it? So if I had everything selected, it will deselect the information and then append the current selection set. So if I had multiple things already selected, would it just add it to it? If you tick that, that's what it will do. Otherwise, when I hit OK here, these two red circles become selected. If I hit there and I change it to maybe magenta and I hit OK, you notice the square and the circle becomes selected. That is quick select. And there's multiple different options here that you can use and play around with, which I highly do encourage. Thank you guys. I hope this, is, I hope this has been helpful. Have a wonderful day. Just goodbye.